Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The 25th Washington Business Hall of Fame program is about to begin.
Ladies and gentlemen, the 25th Washington Business Hall of Fame program is getting underway. Please take your seats. Tonight's gala will recognize five of the D.C. area's most accomplished business leaders as they are inducted into the prestigious Hall of Fame. Our program is packed with fascinating guest speakers, so please take your seats. We'll begin in just a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 25th Anniversary Washington Business Hall of Fame Gala. Please rise for the singing of the National Anthem by Mr. Davis Guest here, accompanied by the Miles Stiebel Orchestra. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proud we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose spot stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's Bursting in air Gave who through the night That our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave O'er the land of the free Washington Business Hall of Fame, showcasing Washington, D.C. entrepreneurs for 25 years. People who not only succeed in business, but who also give back to their community. Leaders who mentor the American dream. Business trailblazers who guide the next generation of entrepreneurs. Outstanding personalities who advise and support the youth of the Washington, D.C. area.
the best of the business community who understand the great gifts of free enterprise. Over the past 25 years, we've come together to honor those individuals who bring passion to their professional lives and provide an example to the next generation of business leaders and entrepreneurs. Tonight, we will award five of these outstanding leaders in the Washington, D.C. business world. Join us now in celebrating their accomplishments and their acceptance in the Washington Business Hall of Fame. And now, please welcome your 2012 Washington Business Hall of Fame laureates, accompanied this evening by Junior Achievement students from Farabee Hope Elementary School in Washington, D.C. Thomas Hale Boggs, Jr., accompanied by Zakia Jean. Giuseppe Cecchi, accompanied by Danasia Stanley. John Darvish, accompanied by Shanika Jones. Charito Cruvant, accompanied by Jamar Curley. And Ronald Paul, accompanied by Janaya Norville. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for your 2012 Washington Business Hall of Fame laureates. And now, please welcome this year's Hall of Fame event chair, the vice chairman of Eagle Bank, Bob Pincus.
Thank you. I'm not used to the theater in the round, but uh, Ron, sit down. Come on, Ronald. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and welcome to the annual Business Hall of Fame dinner. I'm Bob Pincus, and it is indeed my pleasure to be here with you tonight, and what a way to kick it off. But first, please join me with a round of applause for our vocalists from the National Anthem. What a terrific performance. We're all in for a wonderful evening, from our stage, to the tables, to the four-course meal, and we're gonna move this evening right along, so please feel free to dig in while we get started. I'm excited and honored to be the chairman for the 25th Annual Hall of Fame Dinner, the proceeds of which benefits Junior Achievement and all the wonderful programs that they have for, uh, in the metro area for financial literacy for our youth. And I'm going to the other podium. I can't sit still. I'm honored to welcome our great slate of laureates this year and those former laureates who are so instrumental in the development of Washington, D.C., making it the world-class city that it is today. I'm proud that we have a full house, and we do have a full house tonight, to celebrate the laureates, which the Washington Post characterizes this dinner as the Hall of Fame dinner as the Academy Awards of Outstanding Business Achievement and Contributions for our region's young people. You'll note from the yearbook your book portion of your program, the illustrious heritage and the incredible business acumen, as well as the community focus for which the select group represents. We're pleased to have with us tonight a number of our prior honorees already inducted in the Hall of Fame. I would like to individually introduce these laureates when your name is called, please stand and be recognized, and please hold your applause, applause until all are announced. Chip Ackridge, Gloria Bohan, David Bradley, Oliver Carr, Raul Fernandez, Steve Harlan, Till Hazel, Wilhelmina Holliday, Cliff Kendall, Barbara Krumsek, John Latham, Ted Turner, Ted Lerner, excuse me, wrong team. <laughs> I apologize, wrong team, Ted Lerner. Louise Lynch, John McDaniel, Alan Meltzer, Herb Miller, and somebody I do recognize, Bob Pincus, Linda Rabbit, David Resnick, John Schweeters, Esther Smith, Ken Sparks, John Tidings, and Earl Williams. So let's give this all of these people. And tonight, we come together to induct five new laureates that are equally impressive in their achievements and also the examples they set for young people in our community. I look forward to introducing the evening's master of ceremonies, Fox News' Brent Baer. He's working today until 7 o'clock. He better be here soon. But Brent will be here as the master of ceremonies in just a bit. But for now, and without further delay, let's begin our formal program, the induction of our first 2012 Washington Business Hall of Fame laureate. Each of our presenters will be escorted by a student from Furby Hope Elementary School, a junior achievement school located in Washington, D.C. It is my pleasure to introduce as our first pair of presenters, Mr. Bill Thomas, William Thomas, partnered with Reed Smith, accompanied by Danasia Stanley. Honoree 
Tony got his start in real estate building, the Watergate building. Hmm, I guess everybody got to start somewhere. <laughs> Here to introduce this pioneer of mixed-use development is Mr. William Thomas. That's one of the best introductions I've ever had. Good evening. It's my privilege to briefly, in two minutes, introduce Giuseppe Checchi. That could take two hours. I've known Giuseppe for a great number of years. He's been a business peer, a client, and a very good friend. He's made a tremendous success for himself in real estate development, and I've had the privilege and the pleasure to serve on his board for over 25 years. Giuseppe came to the United States from Milan in 1960 as an engineer for Societe Generale Immobiliare, scouting investments and supervising their construction was his task. His first project was that little known project Watergate. And the thing we tend to forget about Watergate, we think about so much uh, about Watergate, is that it was Washington's first mixed-use project, bringing residential, office, hotel, retail uh, to Washington in one project. This project was a sign of the success to come. As his career grew rapidly, Giuseppe formed his own firm, International Developers, Inc., IDI, in 1975. IDI has built and developed more than 13,800 condominium units in the Washington metropolitan area, including 3,000 affordable units. The firm has also developed 2.8 million square feet of office space and three hotels in the Washington area. Though the company has grown over the years, IDI is very much a family business, and Giuseppe employs three of his four sons in the business today. His success in real estate has garnered him many accolades over the years, including the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Washington area, Metropolitan Area Builders Association. Giuseppe's business acumen and success is but one side of a very good friend and a fine man. He is also, as many of you know, a soft-spoken, humble man. He's very compassionate and fiercely loyal to his friends and his colleagues. He's a family man in the largest sense as a devoted father, grandfather, and husband. Uh, Giuseppe brings and gives back much to his community through donations of time and money to many organizations, among them Catholic University, the National Capitol, Children's Museum, the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts, and I could make a, a long list for you. But I remember a quote from Giuseppe one time when he said, I've earned more than I need to live happily. I have to share it. As a prior Hall of, Fame, Hall of Fame honoree said to me a number of years ago about Giuseppe, he said, when Giuseppe comes into the room, the quality present elevates substantially. Ladies and gentlemen, I could introduce to you no finer man than Giuseppe Checchi, and I'd like for you to join and watch the video profile of our very good friend, Giuseppe Cecchi. <clears throat> I grew up in Milan with my family. My middle school years were interrupted by World War II, and we all left the city and moved to the country when the bombardment started. At the end of the war, everything went back to normal. I finished my high school, and then I went to the University of Milan, the engineering school. Five years, I, I, was, uh, I got my master's degree in professional engineering. 
I, I come from a family of engineers. The first lesson was geometry. And the professor of geometry told us, engineers are problem solvers. Every problem has a solution. And I will teach you how to find it. In 1959, SGI decided to start some activity in America. I volunteered and they, they put me on the group that came to open the office in New York. My first challenge when I came to the United States really was to learn English and uh, written English. And then by chance, I discovered a method which I believe is the fastest method to learn a foreign language. And that is intensive movie watching. I came to Washington in July of 1960. They moved me to Washington and they charged me with the task of directing the construction of Watergate. I have two projects that uh, I'm most proud of. One is Watergate. It was my first big project here, my first claim to fame. The second one that I'm very proud of is a conversion to condominium of Parferfax and Parkis. In the late 70s when that, that happened, conversion was sort of a synonymous of uh, displacement of uh, moderate income people. And I developed a plan where I was able to offer to the resident to become homeowner at the same cost of their rent. Over 75% of the residents took advantage of that plan and became homeowners they fulfill their American dream. That project I'm very proud of. It's not as glamorous and famous as Watergate, but it gives me a deeper sense of satisfaction to have been able to do that. And I have received hundreds. I have a tall book like that of thank you letters from people that were thanking me for being able to continue to live in their homes rather than being displaced. Personal success is really to be able to achieve what you set up to achieve, what is important for you. For me, uh, uh, having a happy family is success. Being able to raise my children to be good citizens is success. Be able to achieve my goals, and being able to help people that need help is success. Ladies and gentlemen, Please join me in welcoming Giuseppe Cecchi. Thank you. Thank you, Junior Achievement, and thank you, Greater Washington Board of Trade, and thank you, Washingtonian Magazine. I accept this great honor of being inducted into the Washington Business Hall of Fame with both deep humility and great pride. You have put me together in a, with a group of very special people I have known and admired for years. Thank you. I came to this country in 1960 as a young engineer making $500 a month, and I was 30 years old. Now I am 82 years old, and it's been an extraordinary experience for me to be able to achieve the American dream. Junior Achievement is uh, performing a remarkable job in training young people to enter the workforce and be successful. And in this troubled economy, I believe that the role of junior achievement has become more important than ever. So keep doing the good work. 
And now I have a few words of advice for the young students of junior achievement. Living your lives and pursuing your careers in accordance with some guiding principles is going to make it easier for you to succeed and to gain the respect of your peers. Based on my own personal experience, this is my advice for you. Be honest. Be fair. Always fulfill your promises. Do not promise more than you can deliver. It's better to deliver more than you have promised than to promise more and deliver less. Try to stay out of debt. <laughs> Do not spend more than you earn. <laughs> if you... If you cannot afford to go to college, don't sit idle. Take a job, work hard, prove yourself. You can go to college later even while you're working. And remember, your first job does not have to be your dream job. Your first job is where you have the opportunity to establish yourself. Work hard, you will succeed. But do not overreach. It is better to start at a lower level and go up as you prove yourself than to start too high and risk to fail. If and when you may consider starting your own business, always remember that before you can give directions to others, you have to learn to obey the directions given to you. I myself worked for 20 years for a salary, and only when I reached the top of my salaried career as president of a company, then I started on my own. And one last important point. In order to succeed, perseverance and determination are more important than IQ. And I leave you with that. Thank you. Thank you, Giuseppe. At this time, we invite you to finish your first course. We'll be back in just a few minutes to continue our program and meet laureate number two. Thank you.